Yeah. All right, this is Let's Talk You How, and we got VH1 New Princess from Black Ink <laughs> Season 4, <laughs> Tyler Mack. Alright, right, Tyler Mack, everybody want to know where you're from because we here in Connecticut, we here in New York, we here in Orangeburg, we here in Virginia, so where you from? Alright, I'm from Bridgeport, Connecticut. That's where I was born. All my life. I lived in different places. Like, I, um, I moved around with my mom. My mom always moved around and you can live where your mom lives. You know what I'm saying? She always wanted better, like, whatever level she had as far as life. She always wanted to go above and beyond. So if she had to move to do it, that's what she was going to do. So when you hear of Orangeburg, South Carolina, when you hear Virginia Beach, Virginia, when you hear, when you hear New York, well, I was living in New York. Here in New York, or if you're here, uh, anywhere, you know that Shoot, I move around a lot, and it's almost like I live there, you know, when I come to people's city, you know, I got family, friends everywhere, it's almost like I've been living there anyway, because I travel so much, I like the world talking about, you feel me? Mm-hmm. So you graduated from Virginia State, and you got your degree in what? Public administration. I got a bachelor's in public administration. So how you went from that to doing tattoos? Uh, all right. Tattoos came about because I was doing a whole bunch of mischievous stuff. I'm just gonna say that before tattoos ever even came, I was just doing a whole bunch of stuff. So tattoos, I that fell upon me because I wanted a tattoo and somebody messed a tattoo up for me. But I felt so excited about getting a tattoo. Now this don't got it really don't got nothing to do with my school because I was doing stuff while I was in school anyway. I always been the type of person to have more than one source of income and be going to school too. Like I'm just smart like that. Mm-hmm. So I was going for public administration, doing what I was doing, but really was from peripheral. I was it was English first, you know what I'm saying? Because English. That had all the hoes, you know what I'm oh saying? <laughs> Public administration was all right, though, you know. Uh, but I did a lot of stuff in public administration. It was fun. Could I just talk? Or this is like Tom. You going to edit all this? You know what I'm saying? Because I got a story. You want to tell me? I really want to talk to the people. You know what I mean? Go ahead. Sit me up here. Shit. So, you know, I, 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 my personality fit public administration a little better. And when I went to public administration, I was cool. But somebody, like I said, messed my tattoo up. And I was so excited. I was so excited. I was hyped. I was like, yo, you know, I'm getting tacked, man. I get this dude clothes, money, whatever, you know. It ain't even matter, you know what I mean? He could have moved to my house, you know what I'm saying? That's how bad I wanted a tat. And I seen how excited I was for this tattoo. And when he, he messed mine up and he did what he did, I just looked at him and I said, yo, I could do your job better than you could do your job. And it was the end of that. And ever since, I ain't never looked back. Like, this replaced, this replaced my drive for a lot of other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It gave me a, a nice path. I never really been the type of guy to really, like, work for somebody else unless I wanted to learn. You know? Like, that was really it. If I couldn't learn from you, I really wasn't chopping it up like that. I've never really been that type. That's why I'm, I'm trying to be my own boss now and do what I do and make my own hours and, and be Tyler for the rest of my life. That's who I want to be, Tyler Mack for the rest of my life. Do the shit that Tyler Mack does. What the fuck I want to do. It's good. All right. So how did you get on Black Ink? All right, so it's a little bit now I'm in the tattoo game, the tattoo industry. Not even the industry, just the game. I'm trying to find myself, right? But I'm, I'm hearing about this apprenticeship, you know? Like, you gotta, if you wanna really be this uh, artist, you do an apprenticeship. Like, that's what people tell you. Not necessarily some people that didn't do an apprenticeship. They, they what is an apprenticeship for people that don't know? Oh, for people that don't know, an apprenticeship is basically going to school to learn the trade. Learn the craft, learn the business behind it, you learn the technique of tattooing. You learn that from a, a collective of great.
greater artists than yourself. Like great artists who just suck up knowledge. You go, you have to clean, you have to work hard. Like you wouldn't be an apprentice, like you basically will they but they gonna talk shit, but it's for your good. It's for you so you know, like just be whoever you get an apprenticeship, just be quiet, man. Just listen. Just listen, don't say nothing. You gotta clean up, clean up. Do whatever you gotta do. So you can attain knowledge, cause the knowledge is power, you know. Yeah. But I was I was looking for an apprenticeship or whatever, and um, me and my homeboy Shalit, you know, we was in the trap and shit. I'm tapping his stomach, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I mean. So we like, uh, he like, can you watch Black Ink? I'm like, nah, I don't watch TV, cause one, if you do a task, your head is constantly down. And two, I'm never at the spot anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, nah, I don't watch TV. You know what I'm saying? What's up with it? He turned it on. Man, these motherfuckers are hilarious. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, hey, what does this got to do with tats? <laughs> I didn't even know. Like, this got to do with tats. But they did some tats, and this shit was all right. You know what I'm saying? I, they was at a convention. It was at a convention. I remember this crazy. They was at a convention, and everything was just going wrong. I was telling myself, I said, man, up. If I was at that convention, none of that shit would have went wrong. You know what I'm saying? I would have made sure all that was together. You know what I'm saying? I said, if I had something like that, a chance like that. But, like I said, this was later on in the little tattoo world I was in. So it was like, I was a scratcher. I'm still a little bit of a scratcher now at Hard Life. But I was a scratcher doing whatever. Goddamn, just trying to make some money. Just trying to hustle. Trying to pay, get paid off this. Go hard. Get rich off this. Um, And from there... I, I looked at Sheik, I said, yo, Sheik, I said, man, I'm going to go up there, because my mama lived in Connecticut, it was like, yo, mom, I'm going to go up there, I'm going to call them, you know what I'm saying, the worst thing the niggas can tell me is no, because at the end of the day, I already been to uh, a lot of different, a lot of different tattoo shops, asking for an apprenticeship, can I apprentice under you, yeah, 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 no, every time it was a constant no. And I wasn't going to give up on craft. I was going to give up on try to learn from somebody else. I was going to basically self-teach myself. You know what I mean? That's one of the best forms of education anyway. So, long story short, man, I came up there. I called them. This lady named Tay told me to come in. Nice lady. She was like, um, come in. That's when I met Caesar. You know what I mean? I had a motherfucking suit on, <laughs> fresh cut. Hell yeah! He looked me up and down. He was like, "You got seven days." He was like, "You gotta come every day." He was like, "If you miss one day, you might as well not even show up." So I came every day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I was coming from uh. I was coming from Connecticut every day, you know what I mean? Like crazy, that's some crazy stuff. I'm glad I'm down south, it's cold as mother. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, yeah, man. So yeah, we, you know, that's how I got into the whole Black Ink Circle. Basically, just from seeing the show and taking a chance, taking a risk. They just told me no, I could have went all the way up there. It was like, nah. I didn't care though. I got thousands of notes. Thousands yeah. of notes. Okay, so um, I got family that stays in Brooklyn. So every time I go to New York and I ask about the blinking yes. shop, I always be hearing, you know, that show yes. wag. It ain't really how it is on TV and all kind of stuff like that. So um, when you first got the black ink, the shop, what I guess what everybody really wants to know is. Is it exactly how it seems on TV or is it really lame or in person? I don't know how it seems on TV. It, it, it seems like it's the shit on TV, the place to be. That's what everybody Nah, it is the shit. What are you talking about? <laughs> you fucking out. Yeah, black ink is the shit. Hell, yeah. motherfucking yeah, my nigga. <laughs> Henny and Red Bull, nigga. So it's the show. <laughs> <laughs> so is the show scripted or is that all nah, y'all? Nah, nah. That ain't scripted nah, at all? that shit is, man, look. It might be, all right, it might be a motherfucker like, you know what I'm saying? Like say, say for example, say for example, say, say,
say this, you got your homeboy, right? And then you got a man, and um, say I say your your homeboy is fucking you, right? And um, you your man, we we having a party, and your man comes to the party, and your homeboy fucking you, so y'all at the party. But say the camera up, you know what I'm saying? Somebody might be like, hey, talk about that time where you fucked this girl. Boom, it's over. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? <laughs> what you mean? I don't know nothing about this. This is completely unexpected. What you mean? You fuck my girl, nigga. Yeah, yeah. So now it's a rap, but it's not scripted. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's actual people's lives and lives that they live in there, but they were trying that to everybody else. Like, Black Ink is a real shop. You know what I'm saying? Black Ink is a real tattoo parlor. You can really go to Black Ink and get a fire ass tat. Really, every day. 365 days a year, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Even on holidays, that motherfucker open half day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You really go get you some fire shit. Alright, so that, um, that tattoo, Donna gave you. You never got a cover? Why? Uh, a couple of reasons. Um, one being, I haven't had the right person that I would feel like uh, to cover it, and the person, a person that will cover it for me, you know what I'm saying? I haven't had the time to link with that person. You feel what I'm saying? So that's one reason. Uh, secondly, sometimes it takes people time to think about what they're going to cover the tattoo with. Even if I uh, shit, I fuck around, might not even cover that motherfucker. I might fuck around, keep that bitch, and just goddamn build around my back and make that motherfucker flow into everything. You know what I'm saying? And she'll get what she want. You know what I mean? A part of me forever. Shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's already embedded, goddamn it. You know what I mean? But, you know, shit, I ain't really, really even been pressed about it. You know what I mean? It's just mm -hmm. You know what I do when I get tattoos? I forget about them, you know what I'm saying? I forget about them, so shit, my main focus is goddamn, get this chicken, you know what I'm saying? Shit, I fuck around, get this chicken, nigga. I could redecorate my whole shit, you know what I mean? Had these motherfucking hoes really on my dick. Shit. But will you be returning to Black Ink next season, or that's something you can't tell us yet? I honestly couldn't tell you. Shit, motherfuckers like to see me, nigga. Hell yeah, nigga. Niggas be like, oh yeah, everybody bitches all up across the country is going crazy right now, dog. This bitch is just screaming your name right now, nigga. You gotta get back. <laughs> Hell yeah, but I ain't gonna hold you. I like I like being out in the world, being my own boss and making the Tyler Mac brand. You know, me Tyler Mac tour. You can meet me, you can sit down and you just have a consultation with me, you know what I mean? And I do your tat and I make it official and I represent, you know, what I've been taught to the best of my ability, you know what I mean? And you can roll with the Meet Tyler Mac tour, you can roll with Tyler Mac. Tyler Mac the brand. Okay, all right. So you got this new single out, hot right now, it's on YouTube. You actually record it while you're in the shop and some other places called um, Like Me. Yeah. So. The question is, are you going from reality to rapper, or are you trying to do both? Like, you trying to be on other shows and see where the TV life takes you, or you just want to be strictly a rapper now? You know what's the thing? I really ain't trying to do none of that shit. I'm just doing that shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I honestly, I ain't, I'm not trying to be a rapper. Like, you know what? I got, I never thought that I would be into music, you know what I mean? Because I was living life, real life. So I'm living real life and I'm out there, I'm listening to the rappers like, damn, them niggas is real, you know what I mean? Them niggas is, I feel like them. You know what I mean? Like that nigga talking for me, he's saying the shit that I didn't want to say. I kind of fell into the studio and some other some other shit and then just started rapping and just found out that my shit is hard. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know what I mean? In reality TV, I was doing music before, I was doing music before I ever, Introduced in to the Black Ink crew mm -hmm. before I ever went to New York. My whole boy Starframe and all of like I was always my own little had my own little conglomerate going on. I still got one growing now right now. You know I always been that type to be a networking. That's what I do. I already had stuff already popping and just 
unfolding. You know what I mean? Now I can I now I understand when niggas be like, don't call it a comeback, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, because I always been constantly moving. I'm a consistent. When stuff gets moving, stuff gets hard. Even when I, I go up and uh, my status and I build my value, uh, I'm still going to continue to perfect my craft and stay focused. Like, cause that's at the end of the day, that's what it's going to be. Even when I build myself to where I, I I'm going to never feel comfortable. I'm going to never feel get complacent. Never. I'm always, it's going to always be something that I say, you know what, I got to improve this. You know what, I ain't do what I, I got to do better than I did yesterday. You know what, I got to make a move right now, real time. Time ticking. Mm-hmm. And look, I'm telling you right now, Tyler Mac ain't going to be here forever, you know what I'm saying? So I got I got to live life, you know. Sure. Motherfuckers want to see me, I want to see y'all too. So explain your style of music, and then tell us who are your influences. Alright, my influences, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do Trick Daddy, you know what I'm saying? My uncle Doug, Doug Ski, you know what I'm fucking with? Um, man, these are like artists now, like I, I really fuck with Ross, Rose, that nigga go off. Fabulous, that nigga go off. Um, let me see. Weezy, you know, I, I, that whole little cash money, rich gang, conglomerate shit. I grew up off the niggas, you know what I'm saying? That was mm-hmm. the hot boys with the shit when I was a kid. Uh, yeah, these niggas taught us how to get these hoes, you know what I mean? <laughs> Straight up, nigga, you got to look like this, dress like this, nigga, smell like this. You know what I mean? Bitches like this shit. So, you know. Well, those, those, well, I can, I can name artists forever because at the end, they don't even only got to be rappers, like, Shuz, I'm a type of type of mug, be listening to Beethoven, you wouldn't even know. Mm-hmm. Now, my style of music, uh-huh. those are my influences, my style of music, is Tyler Mack. Tyler Mack, everything. Tyler Mack, the brand. New Tyler Mack tour, what do you say? <laughs> the Tyler Mack tour, you had that movement going on, it, it's still in works, right? Absolutely. All right, so what are you promoting? You just promoting your music? You want tattoos? Or is it just focus on one thing? Everything. What y'all want? An IGB shirt? You know what I'm saying? I get busy. You know what I'm saying? I get bitches. You know what I mean? What's good? What you want? Everything. We got everything. What you want? I'll make that motherfucker. What's up? Tattoos, music, all type of advertising, anything. What? You want to come chill with me? You club with me? Artists, any of that. But you want to go crazy? You know what I mean? You want to just, you just you want to get tatted? What you want to do? We got all of that. Anything you're looking for. If I don't got it, I'll make sure that I can find get it for you. Okay, alright. So, when can we expect some more music? When can we expect a mix say? Oh, man. Sure. Y'all want that? Does the streets want that? I think they do.
Facebook on Facebook too. Yeah, I got Facebook, Tyler Mac. Mm-hmm. Sure. I will get my number out there. We might be some crazy motherfucking chat guy. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck around, I gotta chill on that, you know? Shucks. Sure. Well, I appreciate it. though, I'm that type of nigga. Well, I appreciate it, um, for you joining me, letting me know, letting me do this interview on you. I appreciate it. You know, you're nah, crazy, thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate you, you know, definitely make sure everything is situated. You know, mm-hmm. as far as you know, 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 you Thank <laughs> you.